Okay, welcome back everyone. Funny enough, this is day three lunchtime at uh, Aragon Circuit. So a lot has happened in uh, two and a half days and I've been through a lot of kind of emotional roller coaster inside. I haven't shown that to a lot of people because I had a bit of a bike issue which is now absolutely sorted. This track event, the three day event, was all about me getting out of a hole uh, where I was after my angle C crash because I was slow, I was I was cussing myself, I was just not myself and I was really upset all the time and irritated that this is not for me anymore but you know the, a, a number of things have come to play, bike issue has sorted, I used a, a continental slick which I had never used before and it's epic, I spoke to Gary Walton from Not So Fast, he just completely changed me uh, but now I just wanted to show you the circuit itself, it's nothing, there's no there's no pomp and show about this there's no I mean this circuit was built in 2009 you would think they might do a Silverstone job with that amazing building they might do a bit extravagant something crazy but they've kept things simple very concretey everything is very concretey the whole kind of inside and everything I'm pretty sure when there's a Grand Prix here they cover all that concrete with you know the riders names and all sorts but it's a very industrially building but it's got everything you need you've got showers you've got plenty of ports for camping you've got you name it they've got an amazing restaurant up there maybe I'll take you there later on but I need to get back on the bike soon because uh, I want to vlog less in this track and uh, a top tip from my friend Tim Croft top cat um, he'll, he'll be laughing because everyone calls him TC anyways he said why don't you this time use less camera and just concentrate on rider development and you know what I think that was a great idea because I struggled in Aston but here I've got my mojo back anyways let's go back to the track so yeah huge huge paddock massive paddock and you can see you know you know it's all up and down it's not a flat circuit it's unbelievable it's like Portimao uh, from some angles but it is a very very technical track if you want yourself to get better I think Andalusia and this is, is one of the most punishing tracks I mean I'm in Andalusia next month so we'll, we'll talk about that then but here yeah massive plenty of garages huge amount of garages electricity garages are locked overnight you've got showers plenty of showers you've got everything here so unlike Almera or Andalusia this is a bit more of a as you can tell it's a world superbike track is a motor GP track and they carry that standard everywhere uh, but that is the media center and that is the restaurant and it's a lovely restaurant up there but right now what I'm going to do is not record anymore because I really want to go back and do something which I don't do very often rather than concentrating on my cameras and all these things I'm going to just study that track study the layout more speak to my good friend Tim, Stefan and a few other people here who are really quick, 2 minutes 7 quick and I'm on a 2 minute 10 at the moment I think um, and I'd like to get to 2 minute 8, 2 minute 9 hopefully which should be a decent lap for a, you know, for a, a 2015 Aprilia and, a, and me who hasn't done, who's probably done one track event two days at Assen in the last 12 months so I'd, I'd be quite proud if I could go, get 2 minute 8 or something like that which will be hard work but anyways um, I'm going to shut myself right now and go inside to the garage um, and I will show you some onboard footage.
Okay, welcome back guys. So we gained about a second there uh, on that lap. Just let me reiterate what I said in part two, what tires I'm running, what brakes I'm running and how this new Continental is doing. So um, basically I'm on the Superbike Slick Pirelli in the front and a Continental rear. Now this Continental is a 255, which is similar to a Metzler TD, which is also a 255. I mentioned this in the last uh, part, but I'm mentioning the performance difference between the two or say dynamic difference between the two. The Metzler TD, when it gets really hot, when you're doing really good lap times on Metzler TD, it starts sliding. The Continental doesn't. It hardly slides. Um, at the end of the day, I do some half decent lap times on it and it gets really hot and the winds actually die down a little for a change in the in the evening time. But this Continental does not slide and in the front I've got the Akasato calipers which are amazing and the Vesra sintered pads which are amazing as well. The only thing I would say about the Vesra pads just like the EBC GPF, GPFAX pads they have a lot of dust not as much as EBC GPFAX. Uh, so if you're going to have the Vesra sintered pads you might have to do your caliper cleaning a bit more but the grip level, not the grip level, the kind of uh, immediate braking, the kind of uh, heat dynamics, calipers don't get too hot. Um, you know, you brake on a sixpence, it is just absolutely brilliant. But you get a lot of brake dust from these Vesero pads, but they are absolutely amazing. <music> Welcome back guys. So a little bit on this whole area, Motorland, the name Motorland, it's a perfect name for this area because when you go to the town centre, uh, you see a lot of memorabilia, you see a lot of mechanical uh, shops, workshops, uh, dealerships, you see a lot of uh, spare part shops uh, and you see rally cars uh, getting repaired there, you see uh, motocross bikes, you see old school bikes, new style bikes, you see a lot of this in this town centre, even though the whole area seems a bit dead. But this area has got a lot of history with all sorts of racing. Uh, I showed you some pictures in part one, I'll show you some more footage now. This whole area has got uh, this kind of uh, road racing, rally cross, rally, motocross, you name it. The whole area is crazy about motorsport. So to build a track here, it makes a lot of sense to build this motorland track. And around this motorland circuit, it's some, uh, sorry, Aragon circuit, it's some amazing landscape as well. So they built this track uh, around 2007 or eight or something like that with a lot of um, passion, uh, a lot of strategy, a lot of um, kind of um, ahead thinking. So let me now show you some lunchtime footage. <music>
Welcome back everyone. Now, someone asked me in part one about this special Aprilia I mentioned. Uh, and someone also asked me in part two, which were your favorite bikes there? I never get asked this question, but I will uh, surely answer this. So part one, the Aprilia I mentioned. So Ian, my good friend, has an amazing Aprilia RSV4 FW, factory works bike. So you could get a specialized factory works Aprilia through the Noale factory in Italy if you pay some extra dosh. So they have a menu basically of what you want. So you can have this amazing, I think it's 8,000 to 10,000 pounds or euros ECU. I think it's called Apex ECU or something. It's just another level ECU. Electronics, the wiring loom, the engine, it's got like a world endurance head on it. These bikes are fact, race factory made bikes on special orders. They could cost you anything from 25 to 40,000 pounds. You can go even more if you want to. They've got some, you know, factory Gucci parts, uh, you know, like specialized rear sets, specialized um, clip-ons, um, suspension, of course, and a blueprinted engine, um, you know, and, and everything. So that was my special bike there. Then I loved Simon Hallam's BMW, fully carbon BMW. When I say fully carbon, it had carbon everywhere. It was amazing. And Simon was giving, giving it some as well. Um, so yeah, that was, these were my two uh, favorite bikes. Now it's time to show you some more laps. This will be the last session. Ultimately, I hit two minute eight and I'm ecstatic about it. And um, I'll show you two or three laps if I can. Uh, of this and then we'll come back and I'll show you some more footage around the track.
I don't know if you can hear me because I've got no mic or nothing. I'm just recording it on the phone. Got a little can of San Miguel. I'm really, really happy celebrating a two minute, two minute eight forty three. I've got, I've got. Oh, oh my God! Look at this. Look at this. Look, no limit unicorns. Going on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so yeah, I just did a, a two minute eight point four three. Absolutely ecstatic with that. Coming from a black hole I've been for the last uh, last year or so, where I, I keep thinking I'm not good enough because I've had a crash and everything's in reverse. Brilliant. Massive shout out to you know not so fast Gary Walton. If it wasn't for him. I don't know what I'd do. He gave me some great advice. Massive thank you to my friend Tim Croft, TC, who I followed, and Stefan, who gave me that, you know, Continental tire, uh, the rear tire and a front. Uh, but I didn't use the front, I only used the rear. It gave me so much confidence. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to record this. There's a lot of wind, so I'm going to shut the video pretty quick and probably record most of the stuff from my house. But, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, I. I was struggling at 2 minute 19 here, then Tim, I followed Tim and got 2 minute 16 and then had a word with uh, Gary, went to 2 minute 11, um, then 2 minute 10 and then no 2 minute 9. Last session of the third day, 2 minute 8.43 is just epic, absolutely epic. You know, and I'm sorry I couldn't record a lot of the stuff, I really wanted to show you uh, you know the full track and the restaurant and the media center and all, a lot of, lot of other things But this was all about self-development for me because uh, I've been really struggling And I think I needed a day like this where I needed to concentrate on my riding and less vlogging now let's discuss uh, My performance so you saw the last session where I did a two minute eight now I had a lot of confidence with this full power back. Um, I was very happy with that two minute eight. Um, and, you know, I have to say a big thank you to my mate, Tim. Big thank you to Gary Walton for getting my, me this, uh, the mental gremlins to go away in part two, which I went through in detail. But, you know, ultimately the confidence came uh, from the added horsepower, the Akasato calipers, the tires. If I had full power, for the day one and day two, I personally feel I did a two minute 8.4. I think a two minute six dead was achievable. Another 2.4 seconds were achievable if I had um, full power, just like I had on the last, I would say, because one session was red flagged, last four sessions of uh, of day, day three, really. So not gutted at all. For me, this was a complete win-win situation because I wanted to go to a track day and get all my mental um, bat off my back. You know, that kind of gremlins I had after my crash. And I'm, I'm not going to go through with that in detail because when I went to Assen a month and a half ago, I was dead slow. You know, let me tell you how slow I was. I did a two minute two, I think, at Assen. And my mate, Cal, with his lovely hyper motard bike hyper motard is a 108 horsepower bike he was a second or a second and a half slower than me you know so 108 horsepower bike was slower than me and i was uh, 176 horsepower you know and so I, I was proper slow so i'm i'm happy that i was able to keep up with these over 200 horsepower bikes i mean it's hard to keep up with these bikes i'll show you a footage now of Tim with his 200 and probably five horsepower bike, I think, or over 200 horsepower. These new Aprilias are quite powerful and the new Ducatis. I mean, I have no legs on the straight, but then I catch him up um, in the bends and I caught him up in the last bend. I then caught him up again um, in the first bend. Then I messed up big time anyways. But, you know, I can catch these people up um, even though they've got a lot of horsepower because I'm a really late breaker. And with these new race calipers I've got, it's giving me more confidence. So <clears throat> all in all, it was a win situation that, you know, all that confidence came back. Because when your mental confidence comes back, everything else aligns together. So I hope you love this Aragon uh, footage uh, of all these three days. We went through some up and downs, uh, but I wanted to give you a reality check of what happens when you go to a track day unprepared. You've never been to that track day before. You've got a bike issue. You're managing that issue. You're learning the track. 
you're having fun, all these things, you know. And uh, I, I'm sorry I didn't record too much while I was around at the circuit because I was a bit upset. Uh, but I showed you some snippets of me being at the track here and there, showing you a few bits uh, um, and stuff like that. So hope you enjoyed this series. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience with these long videos. Look after yourself. Next series will be the Andalusia circuit in Spain again. That will be four episodes of four days. And believe me or not, that's even faster. I was the fourth fastest guy on that racetrack with 126 people there. So yeah, blowing my own trumpet. I am blowing my own trumpet. And I'm quite proud of that. Thank you. Take care. Look after yourself. Goodbye.